Hello everyone, it's Jack. It is story time. And I've actually worn this t-shirt before. I wore it seven weeks ago. And why am I wearing it again? Because seven weeks ago, I asked you to suggest names for the dog on the shirt. Now that's so let's look at the dog again. Good dog. Okay. And the winning name came to us from Eva. Yay, Eva! Yay! And Eva thought the dead the the, the Blah, 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 that the dog's name should be Elizabeth. So that's the dog's name. So everyone say hello to Elizabeth. And Elizabeth say hello to everyone out there. Say hello to Robin and Sloan and Brecken and Fiona and Cora and Ralph, and don't forget Eva, because you wouldn't have a name if it wasn't for Eva. And Squidgy. That was Elizabeth saying hello to you all, so. <laughs> That was nice. Did you know uh, that uh, 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 Monday is a holiday? Do you know what, what holiday it is? It's Martin Luther King Day. And what they do is, because um, Martin Luther King was born on January 15th, way back, way back, 1929. And so, the, the Monday that's closest to that, that is the day that, that, that we, we celebrate uh, Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday. And, uh, you know, schools are closed and different, different uh, businesses are closed. And, uh, and it's a really nice day. So I thought what we would do is let's let's find out a little more about this uh, this person who who um, who has a, a national holiday, and so I got this book called Happy Birthday, Martin Luther King, and it's written by Jean Marzolo, and the pictures are by J. Brian Pinckney. Okay. The pictures are really nice in this in this book. Uh, there's no pictures right in the front. It's just red. It's a nice red. All right, here we go. So just like I was saying, Martin Luther King Jr. was born on January fifteenth. 1929 in Atlanta, Georgia. Have any of you ever been to... I, I've been to Atlanta a few times. It's nice. Nice city. Uh, and his parents loved him very much. Cute little baby. Martin Luther King had the same name as his father, except for one thing. His father was called Martin Luther King Sr. And Martin was called Martin Luther King Jr. Now what game are they playing there? Look at those nice pictures. That's right, they're playing football. All right. 
Martin went to elementary school. Look at he's studying. Look at all those books. And high school and college in Atlanta. He was a good student, and later he went to, here's a big word, divinity school in Pennsylvania. What is that? Di, di, that's a big word, divinity school. Um, well, it explains it on the next page that Martin became a pastor, like a a priest, you know, um, or, you know, different religions have different, you know, the rabbi, um, and so that, that's what he learned. Divinity school is like religious school. You learn, you could learn how to become a pastor. So Martin became a pastor just like his dad at the Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta. They were both called Reverend, the Reverend Martin Luther King Sr. and the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. Martin's job as a minister was to help people in need. He visited sick people in the hospital and made them feel better. Did, have any of you ever been in the, the hospital? Like I, I was in the hospital, and it's true, they have maybe a reverend or a rabbi or someone comes and talks with you, and it's nice. It's nice to have, uh, you know, a nice chat. And... Uh, and some would tell you that, that everything's going to be okay. Oh, this was another very important thing. He asked people not to fight with each other, right? He said that there were peaceful ways to solve problems. Hey, don't don't fight. Don't you can talk talk it talk it out. Come on you guys, shake hands. Okay. And like his father, Martin led people in prayer and song. There they are in church singing and praying. They're clapping their hands. Now the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. is famous because he helped our country change some of its laws. A law a law is like a rule, you know, that we all follow. And once there was a law in some places, this was not a good law, that said only white people could sit in the front of a bus <laughs> and that black people had to sit in the back of, of the bus. Martin Luther King said, this law needs to be changed. A woman named Rosa Parks and other people helped him change, change the law. And you know what? Now, all the people can, can sit in any empty seat that they like. Oh, this was another another law that needed to be changed. There, there were laws in some places that said African Americans could only use certain restaurants and 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 drinking fountains. Look at that. Only white people could use this drinking fountain. If you weren't white, you had to use 
What a terrible law. Um, Martin Luther King and many other people helped help change these laws so n now all people can share the same restaurants and the same drinking fountains right because we're all we're all the same right even though sometimes we look different inside we're all we're all the same there was even a law in some places that said black children and white children couldn't go to school together. Martin Luther King and other people, including many very brave children, they had that law changed too. And so now black children and white children go to school together. And every, you know, Asian children, Indian children, you know, Arab children, we're all together, right? In school. Martin Luther King had a special talent for leadership. When he spoke, people listened. Poor people, rich people, white people black people and people from all around the world they listened when Martin Luther King spoke many helped him work march sing and pray for peace right cuz when we work together we can we can change things for the better Oh, now this was a long time ago. In the summer of 1963, Martin Luther King Jr. gave the most famous speech of his life. He gave it outdoors to a quarter of a million people. That's 250,000 people who had come to Washington, D.C., and who were asking the president for jobs and, and for freedom for black people. In his speech, Martin Luther King said that he had a dream. His dream was that people everywhere would learn to live together without being mean to each other. That seems fair, right? This is this this part's really sad. So but Martin Luther King was he was killed in 1968. But you know what? Because he loved poor people so much, he was given a special funeral in Atlanta, Georgia where he was born. His body was put in a simple farm cart and pulled slowly by two mules to a cemetery. Thousands of people walked behind Martin in a sad, loving parade. And on his gravestone were carved those beautiful, beautiful words Free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, I'm free at last. Look at that, and people can visit the grave of Martin Luther King, Jr. Now, Martin Luther King wanted people to be able to go places together, to share food together, <laughs> to read stories together, and to, to love one another in peace. And because he worked so hard for freedom 
and helped so many people gain it, we honor him every year on his special day. We call this day Martin Luther King Day, and we say to him, Happy birthday, Martin Luther King. Look at that. There's a, a, some students, and they have a cake. Happy birthday to you. And just more red pages. Did you like that book? I liked it a lot. You know what? Because, you know, a lot, it's a lot of the books we read are, 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 you know, silly. And, but, but this one I learned a lot. And it was, I thought, like, really in, in, interesting and important stuff to learn about, about freedom uh, and about being equal. Uh, so th uh, thanks for listening to that, that book with me. And... Maybe, you know, we'll find something a little more silly for next week. So, from me and from Elizabeth. Have a great week, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.